I think a lot of that is is it, it, you're you're a very observant person, so you have seen the changes. A lot of people, mm. a lot of people look, but they don't see, <laughs> mm. right? You know, they they, they 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 they've got eyes, but they don't really understand the changes, the differences of of what is happening. For me, in the past, LinkedIn was. As, as I saw it, a far more personally orientated platform for people to express themselves. Now, look, look basically, the LinkedIn is now officially corporatized. And um, if you don't post about how wonderful Microsoft is and how you love the queen, um, you know, you, you don't get promoted on the page, right? I mean, it, it, it's obvious. Yeah. yeah. Um, all these people who never knew the queen suddenly posted on LinkedIn how wonderful it, which, how wonderful she was and how sad they were that she died. Mm -hmm. She may or may not have been a good person. I don't know, but I can damn sure fucking tell you that people who are mm -hmm. writing on the page have no idea what they're talking about, right? Because writing about somebody that you've never met is 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 a kind of insanity um so it so i've i've observed that and um i one of the key words you used was sales they're selling something and i really 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 personally don't like the fact that on linkedin i feel that people are punching me on the face with sales mm. we're, we're wonderful we're great these are our products this is amazing and i saw a great post on linkedin a few weeks ago which was which was a uh, reality versus linkedin yeah and i've seen a few of those posts where it's like in reality i passed my driving test and yeah. on linkedin I'd like to thank blah 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 for the yeah, wonderful experiences exactly. and, the, and it, it's it's a whole paragraph of marketing and promotion and thanks for something which is basically a normal function in people's everyday life and you don't need to worship the great gods of whoever helps you with something to try to promote your own self-importance mm. and um that's why i've i've done a lot of experimenting over the last six months and a year with media and posts and um what what i what i've been experimenting with is posting the opposite of what people think should be in places now, obviously, every platform is different, and you have to tailor and cater for the needs of that platform. You, you essentially shouldn't, doesn't mean you can't, you shouldn't post information A on platform C. You, you know, did, mm. maybe you're, uh, maybe like, Obviously, Facebook is different from Instagram, which is different from LinkedIn, which is different from Twitter, which is different from Getter, which is different from... They're slightly different platforms, and there's certain things that you can and can't and should and shouldn't. But um, I believe that the only way to move forward is to challenge people's perspectives. And the only way to challenge people's perspectives is show them something that is completely out of the box, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and to and of course most people's reactions is most people most people's reactions are that's not appropriate or that's not suitable or that's wrong and my response to that is okay but why that's just one person's perspective so I will take maybe a video game post that should be on my personal Facebook page and I'll put it on LinkedIn right just to see what kind of reaction I get from people about it, because it's something that nobody else will do. Every mm. other post is your corporatized, yes, standard, exactly. standardized post that doesn't really 
give you the 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 heart of the matter of things, and it's it, it's people that make the difference. Your product is bullshit, and people are everything. Now, don't get me wrong; product should be quality, right? But what I'm saying is, it's people that make the difference, mm. because it's people that appreciate the product. Yeah, yes, you need a good product for sure. That the ticket by standard, naturally, that that should always be like that. But it's people that make the difference. It's always people that make the difference. Why do you like the company? It doesn't matter if you're comp if it's company X or company Y. It doesn't matter. What matters is the people in the company. The people. It's the people you like and you don't like, right? Because if gen in general, if you've got a good product, it's because knowledgeable people who are very interested in what they do invested time and energy to create the product it's people that are behind everything and there's so much of what is in and on the linkedin platform that is not people it's not personal it's not sharing from the heart it's just your standard language of sustainability and resourcefulness and um, whatever the keyword or key phrase is, um, I don't know, safety, security, biodiversity, whatever, whatever the, the, the phrase is with the, with the corporate picture and the corporate <clears throat> logo. And I understand branding and protecting, protecting the brand, but, um, and the in corporate brand being, very powerful in terms of influence and and recognition you have to sell to people through what they already know mm -hmm. uh, you, have, you have to lead them on but it's 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 all about people at the end of the people people follow people they don't really follow a brand they follow a brand that they personalize it means something to them they feel something about about that because when they invest in that band, brand or that product it makes them feel better and it's it, it's all people orientated mm. and linkedin has lost that personal touch to the point where really everything there is 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 some form of almost everything is some form of hardcore sales and there's nothing I don't see any, maybe there are new things happening there. I don't monitor it all the time, but I don't see anything new and innovative and exciting and different and creative. Yeah, I I tried the premium version for one month and I didn't really feel any personal value um, within that month. So I, I canceled it, but um, I can see why there would be some benefits like especially if you're in the business world and you want to reach out and meet new people and mm -hmm. you don't know where else or how else you can do it and maybe it wouldn't be possible to reach out and contact so many people if you didn't mm -hmm. um, try it like that but that's also a bit like cold calling you know it, it, it yeah. just that, that throwing out these random I don't think that's a. I'm not sure. Let's see, I'm not sure that it's a really good strategy to throw out random emails in the hope that you're going to find um, people that might or might not be interested. I guess if you throw out a high enough volume of, you know, five thousand emails a day because you got some system or something that you're gonna maybe get a reply from one or two people from from that mm -hmm. from that 5000 and maybe be able to do something as a result but um again it's so it's so impersonal and uh it's hard to make a definite offer to people when they don't know you when they don't know who you are yeah. and um the classical old way of building business is no like and trust people and 
that takes time. First, you have to get to know them and then you have to decide if you like them or not. Mm -hmm. And then based on whether or not you like them, you can then trust them. And, uh, and I am surprised that, I'm still surprised that those systems of business actually work where people don't have any real connection or real real contact with people i guess they do work sometimes but um it, companies are behind walls right they, yeah. they, they you, you can't see what's going on inside a lot of the time um you you don't know who to connect with and who to contact and i i think that's that that's a filter that the companies have and i think that's part of the problem um that as people rise up through the positions of management um they're, they're more and more in a box yeah? yeah and you only have look if, if this is what i've seen in in management that you you know a bit maybe not everything or sometimes you know a lot about what's happening inside your own company and then you've got the few other people that you have time for because yeah. you know when you're when you're working you're busy right and then how do you reach outside of the box then where do you meet other people maybe you I don't know, maybe if you're a businessman, maybe you play golf or something, right? And, and mm -hmm. you meet a few people through your your golf club or your social club, or maybe you're part of a business chamber of commerce or something, and you've got an opportunity to meet people through that. Um, but otherwise, where, where and how do you meet people? Um, the classic example in the past was um, through exhibitions and conferences and traveling to to, yeah. to, to larger events and <laughs> printing out business cards and sharing those cards with people and collecting other people's business cards and then getting back home and sorting and organizing your business cards and sending out emails to the people you, you met to try to keep in connection with them. Um, and that, that, that was the classic way of doing things. There was the, um, there was the job of traveling salesman, right? Where you uh, <laughs> traveled around all the time and you, 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 you went to people and companies and businesses and um, just spent you know, 24 hours a day, um, at least five days a week um, doing, d doing things like that. And that is, hard for people in the corporate structure now it's hard for people to to comprehend it's hard for people to have connections outside of the system that they're that that they're in and, and so people don't see everything that's going on and um it's 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 very hard to uh to, to progress sometimes, um, you know, which is where some elements of social media come in, where you promote yourself. I'm always, um, I'm always suggesting to people that maybe, maybe everybody needs a public relations expert working for them <laughs> in order to make them a little bit more well known in the communities, just like uh, film stars and music stars and things, they've all got a publicist, they've all got somebody making their work more well known. And I think that uh, um, individual people could maybe benefit from that as well. Um, I, it, it's hard to find the right position and the right job and you can't do it if you don't know who other people are and they don't know who you are. And my personal advice to young people who are getting involved in business and management is you you have to amplify who you are you have to make that voice a, a bit you have to 
a bit later. You have to be good at what you do as well. But uh, mm -hmm. um, the same way that if you are working in some kind of media orientated environment, whether you um, say music or film, you you need a publicist. And you need a you need a negotiator for your contracts as well. You need a representative who's going to negotiate. Like like if you're in sport, right? Mm -hmm. You don't negotiate your own contract. Most most sports people don't, right? You have an agent. There's the keyword. You have an agent who negotiates for you. If you play, say say you're in America, right? Say you play American football really well, and a team wants a major team wants you to play for the team. They want you to sign for the team. You don't sign for the team. You employ an agent who goes to the teams for you and negotiates and signs your contract. Your job is just to play the sport. Your job is to go to the gym and to train and to follow the instructions of your coach and uh, to learn the, the, the plays and the tactics of the team and uh, to, uh, to perform there. Your, your job is not to negotiate the contract or to, to, to amplify your own personal position, but that's what you need to, to do if, if you want to be more well-known and you want to be successful. You've got to have a publicist. You've got to promote. You've got to have an agent um, who's, working, who's working for you. And I think that's as important as doing your job well at the same time because if like if, you, if you're in music if people don't know who you are they won't buy your music they won't buy your music album they won't invest in you if they don't know who you are and there's a lot of competition for attention right now mm -hmm. in, in in the modern world and um it's hard to gather and garner people's people's attention and people's focus and I, i'm honestly not sure that the statistics that we see about focus and attention are really correct in the modern world like when you when you when you see something like five million people watch this television program i'm not sure that that's really true maybe five million people had their tv on <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah but i'm not sure that five million people actually watched that television program and, and the world is changing and people's perspectives are not correct um more people watch more people online watch and engage in virtual sport than in real sport right now at this point in time virtual esports are bigger are a bigger business than actual sport at this point in time it's that dangerous balance of of how much do we allow technology to influence our lives mm -hmm. um, which is the same with all kinds of new things in the world. You, you can argue that nothing is new as well, but um, uh, it's a different kind of, we're creating a different kind of community, a different kind of culture, a different kind of citizenship. I'm sure you've heard the term digital citizenship, which mm. is, uh, uh, um, part of what the what the transformation is you can argue advantages and disadvantages i definitely agree with you there are many disadvantages uh, um, and yet at the same time if you're a young person who lives in the middle of nowhere and you have an interest in something and nobody around you is interested in that thing except you you are able to connect with people all over the world to sh instantly to share that interest. Mm. Um, the, the sad fact is that this could be healthy or unhealthy um, for that uh, for that person, and uh, um, it's definitely difficult to 
build up real trust through that sphere of things and it might create more anxiety in people than than uh, than anything else it also gives other people the the power to control and limit your communications as well it's extremely dangerous um, um, as we see a lot of people get cancelled or disappeared on the internet <laughs> um, the the uh, the gulag is now not somewhere where you are, it's somewhere where you're not. The, the psychological perspective is, is kind of reversed in that area, but um, um, it's, it's still there. So, um, and, and it's hard for people, I think, to, to amplify and promote themselves and um, big responsibility and dangerous as well, because the more well-known you are, the more influence you have over people, the more responsibility you have. And that's 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 a really difficult position to be in, um, to have that most level of responsibility. Most people are not ready for it. You see it in business and management all the time where people in management roles don't handle their job very effectively simply because they don't have the responsibility to understand that they're responsible for everything, mm -hmm. right? And they have to take responsibility for everything. And if there's a problem anywhere, it's their fault, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's that's called being an adult <laughs> and realizing that uh, that uh, if you have a job and a responsibility, anything that goes wrong is your fault, <laughs> and you have to um, be able to take that on and admit that, which is. Uh, which is difficult, um, but uh, but still very important from from an individual perspective. So um, uh, little little things make big differences, and, and uh, um, maybe uh, uh, I was just thinking about my my LinkedIn profile picture is is I don't have a shirt on. I'm just sta mm -hmm. I'm standing in yeah. my garden. I'm standing in my garden next to a mix. My, my old garden where I used to live next to next to a garage door mm. and it was a summer day and somebody took a picture and it's just me standing in the next to the garage door mm. and and <laughs> the number of people who said to me oh you're you're the person on LinkedIn who doesn't have a shirt mm. I'm like well at least you remember <laughs> mm. you know you're gonna see a lot of people's profile pictures and not remember them so uh um, maybe that makes a difference you can argue whether or not it's good or bad like the beatles the beatles said there's no such thing as bad publicity mm -hmm. i can't remember which if it was their manager or one of the people in the band i can't remember or i don't know um but you know there's there's no such thing as bad publicity because if people are talking about you then you're able to to a certain extent, control the conversation because people are talking about you. And whether they're saying good things or bad things, they're talking about you. And that gives you an opportunity to do something um, and uh, um, to change, maybe, maybe to change people's perspectives, maybe, um, if that's at all possible. Um,